Rockstar here, fans, with the Outlaw Rock Cam. Are you ready to do this, Zach Taro? Yeah, let's do this. All right, let's do this. What's your name? Faye Buckland. Faye, where are you from, my friend? I'm from uh, Oak Hill, West Virginia. And what is your favorite wrestling federation? MSW. That's right, Mountain State Wrestling. Do we care about NWA East and those folks in Pennsylvania that like to thumb their nose at our noble Mountain State? Heck no, we don't. Absolutely not. Faye, you get the Outlaw Bandana of the Week. Thank you, baby. NWA East, you don't matter. Mountain State Wrestling, we're what it's all about. Number one indeed. You, sir, what's your name? That is a fantastic beard. Ed. Ed, Ed, where are you from, my friend? Ballard, West Virginia. And are we proud to be from West Virginia? Well, I don't know if I can say it yet, but hell yeah. Well, that's absolutely the right answer, because I'm the outlaw rock star, and I'm going to tell you, hell yeah, we're from West Virginia. It's where it matters. It's where it's at. I don't even know what they do in Pennsylvania. I don't care what they do in Pennsylvania, because I'm in Mountain State Wrestling. That's absolutely right. I like you, Ed. Good people. Fantastic beard on that man. Matt Barnett, two-time MSW Wrestler of the Year, Chris King. You know who I am? I'm Ricky Shay. The Reckoning, Dwayne Tenney. Pretty boy. From the heathens, got will, got fight, got pride, got reason. If they wanna go eat, then you know I'm gonna feed them. If you're coming for me, hope you're ready for a demon. I got eyes in the back of my head, I'm seeing. Take me for granted, and you know I'm leaving. I'ma take what's mine with the webs I'm weaving. I could take this crap from seeing to believing. Got a taste for blood, and my tongue keeps bleeding from the words I speak. How you doing everybody? I'm Jacques Morlier here with Jonathan Styles and Steven, the outlaw rock star Hensley. Fans, we want to thank our continued sponsorship by Kramer Security, Mark Hunt and Associates, and Lewis Automotive. We come to you live this week from the Summers County Memorial Building here in Hinton, West Virginia. And we got some great matches. We got Matt Connor taking on Matt Barnett, and the winner's gonna get a TV title shot against Andy Awesome. Well, that's definitely a high-profile contest. Matt Barnett, I believe you bit off a little bit more than you can chew this morning. You're going against the man that calls himself the Reaper, and he may very well take your life in that ring. And we got our second in the best of five series between Carl and Ricky Shane in what is scheduled to be a big ladder match. Well, that's definitely, definitely what you think. But I talked to my good buddy, the Psycho Superman Carl. He told me he's got a little surprise in store for Ricky Shane. Ricky Shane, don't think you can outbeat Carl. He doesn't even know where his mind is. It's out there thinking things you and I don't even know about. He doesn't even know about. But this morning you'll know about. You know what I'm saying? He knows what I'm saying. Zach Arnold knows what I'm saying. Well, let's talk about let's talk about the main. what Carl's doing. Let's talk about the main event, which is the band taking on one half of Cruise Control, Sean Cruz. Well, that's definitely going to be a fantastic contest. Now, I've talked a lot about my recent support for Cruise Control over the last couple weeks. And this morning, Mr. Cruise is going up against Mr. The Bandit. I love both these men. They're not going to th sit out there and tell you they're going to mince words. They're not going to be nice. They're not going to sit out there and worry about what the fans think, what they are going to do, however. is break all the rules in the book and put on one hell of a show. And now, let's get to the ring for action. And you see Mr. Dozer making his way out here dressed to the nines. In tow are the Reaper, Matt Connard, 
the Baltimore bad boy Andy Austin, the television champion. And you see in the ring, the sacrificial lamb, Matt Barnett. I can't believe what, what I'm seeing. What is going on, Jonathan Styles? Outside of a good time. <laughs> I cannot uh, believe that. This is I feel like Carl, I'm laughing so much. <laughs> I, I can't. Rise to your feet, make it to your knees. I, I tell you, he is far and away from last year's king of West Virginia. Ricky Shane. Well, it's the dawn of a new day. And this new day, Jonathan Styles belongs to King Bulldozer. And have you ever seen a more dominant looking king of West Virginia than the man that crushes all? Bulldozer telling the fans in attendance he's going to sit on the memory of his adversaries. Get out of the ring for the behavior that he's in. Oh, hell, King Dozer. What? Bow to your King Jonathan Styles. Running the bulldozer's moment like that. He's not running the bulldozer's moment. He's trying to save Matt Barnett. Matt Barnett didn't need saving. This was a career highlight for him. What? Oh, look. Look at the attack by Matt Connor. Matt Connor, hungry to make a statement, goes right after the stroke. Oh, he's going for the signature neck breaker, but no. 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 Snap and tap. Snap and tap. Song's in time for Matt Connor. And you see the bulldozer. Looking on, Matt Connor tapping like there ain't no tomorrow. Absolutely. Somebody needs to get out there and break this off. Why? Why? I love it. This is so unfair. There's not even a referee out here to call this a match. Bulldogs are claiming he's calling out the strong for a match next week. Styles, one thing you cannot do is count Matt Connor out. Matt Barnett, on the other hand, you can count out all the time. He's too nice to make it in this business. Mark my words. Nice guys finish last. Well, I tell you what, right now he's got the upper hand with a little of assistance from the Maestro. And, ah, see, wait a minute, Barnett. Is he going to make Connor top here early? Fantastic on bar there by Matt Barnett or Matt Connor. And Matt positioning himself over the back, holding onto that arm, and getting an even larger torque than he had a moment ago, almost snapping the elbow in half, but also putting increased pressure on that rotator cuff and those deltoid muscles. Matt, Matt Barnett has to be in searing pain right now. Barnett was wise to capitalize on the injury of Matt Carter at the hands of the maestro. Jonathan Stiles, has anybody ever told you you sound like an inebriated 14-year-old calling his best friend's backyard wrestling match? I don't drink, so how would that be possible? Well, maybe you should. I'd have a hard time living with myself if I sounded like you, too. Oh, that's disgusting. Uh, Andrew Gibson now. Uh, I gotta tell you what, Steve, you gotta give credit where credit is due. Matt Barnett is dismantling that shoulder. He's starting to look more and more like a veteran every week here in the Mountain State Ring. Well, at the moment, Matt Barnett is looking very good. He's first across that top rope, oh, and he dropped a fist from the heavens, and he almost drove it through Matt Connard's face. And the Reaper is in trouble here. 
Matt Carter looks like he's red as a tomato out there. And now, Matt Barnett has a lot on his mind right now, primarily revenge. And you see the way he has the Reaper tied up right now. He's putting more and more pressure on that already injured arm. And the look of pain on the face of Matt Connard is not something we have grown accustomed to seeing. Usually he's so dominant out there. He's so in control. And he is in a position he is unfamiliar with at the moment. And I tell you what, Matt Barnett has not given Connard a moment to breathe. And the junior heavyweight champion is in some trouble here. Absolutely. And I tell you, I, I'm, I'm surprised Connor hasn't submitted yet. For the fact that Andrew Gibson has not stopped this match. Well, Jonathan no. Styles, I'm going to have to tell you why Matt Connor hasn't quit yet. He's not a quitter like Matt Barnett. Well, Matt Barnett is not a quitter. But every time he gets attacked from behind, he has a harder time in the match. He comes out here and he gets beaten down oh, by guys like by. Ricky Shane. Oh. Oh. How much of a wuss do you have to be to get beat up by a guy like Ricky Shane? I mean, what are you really? talking about? It's not like he's King Richard. Now, come on a minute. I thought that in that experience. Whatever, Jonathan Styles. Let's focus on the match in the ring. Right now, Matt Barnett, this is a flash in the pan, but some great mat wrestling here. He has that arm grapevine in that arm bar submission. His legs are firmly crossed there. He's putting so much weight on the already injured upper body of Matt Connard, and Matt Connard is having a hell of a time trying to find a way to fight out this one. Just holding on, it's taking everything he has. I tell you, Matt Barnett using a real European style out there. Yeah, but that European style did not hold up to the grit and determination of the Reaper. Firing away with those stiff shots, makes his way up to his feet. Kick to the gun, Matt Barnett. He's going for that creeping death neck breaker. Matt Barnett, oh, though. No, wait a minute. He can't backslide. This be it. He's got a look. And it's over. That's it. And Matt Barnett making a statement this morning. He's eyeballing that NWA Mountain State Wrestling Junior Heavyweight title. And getting a victory, albeit over an injured Matt Connor, is definitely a step in the right direction. He is inside the head of the champion. everybody, I'm Jacques Moliere here with the NWA Mountain State Wrestling Heavyweight Champion, the Maestro, the Maestro of Wrestling. He's going to tell you about March 12th in Hinton, West Virginia. Hinton, West Virginia. Ooh la la. Strozilla, the Maestro of Wrestling, the People's Champ, will be in the house. March 12th, Hinton, West Virginia. Bring your babies, bring your grandmas, grandpas, your daddies, your mamas, your cousins, your brothers, your sisters. It's all the way live. Hidden West Virginia. Check us out. NWA Mountain State style. Ooh la la. Ricky Shane, March 19th, we return to the American Legion Hall in Mullins, West Virginia. I know you have a lot you want to say to your fans out there. 
March 19th, Mullins, West Virginia, 730 at the Legion Hall. Ricky Shane's gonna leave Raleigh, North Carolina, travel that long, 77. He's gonna roll into Mullins, West Virginia, and give his fans a good treat. So come on out and see all the stars of Mountain State Wrestling. Here we have the NWA Mountain State Wrestling TV Champion, the Baltimore Bad Boy, Andy Awesome. Andy Awesome, today you will be wrestling the dark horse, Matt Barnett, and you will be defending that television title. Barnett, you done took my junior heavyweight title away from me once before, and we've had our problems. But it's a new day. This is my year. Andy Awesome's year. They have took everything from me. In my personal life, in my career, Leonard Sims and the rest of them has been trying to put a center on me since day one. I'm not a stupid kid. I am a man. I don't wear masks anymore. I am the television champion and the best one this company has ever seen. And just like I have before and today, I'm going to prove it. When it's over, you're looking at the TV champ still. Andy Awesome. for the television champion from the fans this week. Of course, what else is new? One thing you gotta say for Andy though. What's that? Like him or not, he's a TV champ and he has been on a heck of a roll since he came back. And Matt Barnett was the man that got into his head to begin with. He took that mask off and that unleashed the determination inside of him to say the hell with everyone. Well, I'm gonna run roughshod over this federation if it's the last thing that I do. Well, you got to remember, Andy Austin won the title under what some would consider suspect circumstances when Carl hit Ricky Shane with that chain. Jay Styles, it doesn't matter how he won the title. He has it. That's something he can say. He won his match for his television title. Sort of like the Maestro cannot say he won his match for the NWA world title. All the fans in the mountains, they supported him, and he let him down. Andy Austin isn't out here doing anything for anyone but himself. At least you can respect that. At least you can acknowledge that he's doing what he's doing for exactly why he says he's doing it. Which is what is to be the TV champion and eventually try to become a contender for that heavyweight title held by the Maestro. Hell, he might do it. You see Andy Austin in firm control of this one. On bar on Matt Barnett. You know, I haven't really, I haven't really ever talked about anything I like about Andy Austin. But I've got to tell you, over the last couple months, there was a shortage of outlaws on the scene for a while. I saw the bunkhouse boys going around high-fiving everyone. I thought I lost my mind. Wait a minute! But then Andy Awesome comes on the scene. He makes everybody a little bit meaner than they were before. Carl turns his back on the fans. Sean and Robbie Cruz start reasserting themselves. The bulldozer wakes up and realizes, while he's sitting there high-fiving his good buddy, the maestro, he's missing out on an opportunity to hold heavyweight titles. And all of a sudden, the bunkhouse boys realize that there's people here that are going to do what they used to do, so they went back to doing what they do best. So in a way, I kind of have to thank Andy Austin for putting things in perspective for me. Well, I got to wonder where you're coming from, Steve, with your faculties by aligning yourself with the likes of Bulldozer and the awesome Cruise Control. What are you talking about, Jay Styles? I've been here to put over outlaws from the very beginning. I looked around me one day, and the only damn person I saw going around acting like an outlaw is Andy Austin. And I resisted it for a while, but let's face facts. He's done what it takes. When other people were going around glad-handing people, he did what it took to make a statement. He did what it took to help other guys make a statement. He was the most unselfish man in our business for the last two and a half months. Well, I do know that some people backstage consider him a general to the locker room of certain members like Carl and like the motor. Like Sean and Robbie Cruz. Right. And I tell you, Matt Barnett has a chance to put a real feather in his cap. Can he come back for the beating he took backstage? Well, he's been doing a heck of a job so far, chop across the chest, but Andy Awesome, veteran that he is, fresher of the two men by far, Matt Barnett may as well have been through three matches already with the beatings he's taken. But you see, he still comes out of nowhere. Back elbow to Andy Awesome, goes for the cover, hooks the leg. But once again, Andy Awesome is so fresh in there, and Matt Barnett, I'm afraid he just doesn't have the strength to put him away right now. It's going to take an act of God to pull it off. 
All right, wait a minute. We got fisherman soup. Going in, into the pen. Yes. Two. Oh, I thought that was gonna be it. But a kick out by Andy Austin. The Baltimore bad boy is definitely not out of this one yet. And he has a lot of motivation in this one. It was Matt Barnett that ripped that mask off of him. And now maybe it lit a fire under him. Maybe it helped him reassert himself as what he's always been in this business, a professional, a professional wrestler, unlike guys like Matt Barnett. But he certainly doesn't remember that fondly, and I don't blame him. How can you call the conduct that we're seeing right now by Andy Austin professional as he uses the ropes to his advantage to choke out Matt Barnett. Well, I don't see anything wrong with this. How do you not see he's it? doing the same thing that I said he's been doing the last couple months. He's doing what it takes to get the job done. Matt Barnett not doing what it takes to get the job done. He could have walked away this morning after a victory over Matt Connors, and what's he doing now? He's staying there to have a match with Andy Awesome after he's been beat to hell. What in the heck is the point of that? to try to gain the television title. And Andy Awesome measures Matt Barnett and drills him hard into I the canvas. I question the sanity of this decision. Yeah, it's a shot, but you're a beaten man right now. You came into this match on one leg. Heck, Matt Barnett came in on one half of a leg. The rest of it was beaten off and eaten by the bulldozer. The rest of it was beaten off and fed to Matt Connor. And what a great drop kick by Andy Awesome. Well, exactly. A great drop kick by a great man. Well, I will not take anything away from Andy Awesome's technical ability, but to say that he plays by the rules and he plays fair would be a disgrace to the Voice of Traditions moniker. Well, I gotta say, Jay Styles, you might not like what he's doing, but I love it. It's taken me a long time to admit it, but Andy Awesome has the right idea. He is an American original. He's the Baltimore bad boy. You took away his identity one time, he didn't waste time crying about it. He came back hungrier than ever. He came back, got the television title, and he came back and influenced the careers of a lot of guys in a positive way. He's a very unselfish man, unlike the maestro, who only thought of himself as a world title shot. And then he went out there and he let down everyone in the he mountain state. He let down everybody, bulldozer, cheated him. And you saw it and I saw it. Near fall there, though, by Matt Barnett. Matt Barnett just hanging in there. DDT by Andy Awesome. All the good it doesn't. Could be put Barnett. Not like that. You, a laxity you'll cover from a veteran like Andy Awesome should be disgraced. And now Andy Awesome just measuring Matt Barnett as he attempts to fight back and go from the breadbasket and the jaws just punch it out. And Matt Barnett trying to get something going and just like a house of fire out there now. Matt Red Barnett Hill throwing Hill. everything at him but the kitchen sink. Puts him for the bulldog. Drives a face first down into the mat. Andy Awesome staring up at the ceiling. This might be Matt Barnett's moment. Could, could it be it? Could it be all? Could we see a new TV champion? Wait a He's picking him up. He's trying to put him in position. Fireman's carry position. What is Matt Barnett thinking? Wait a minute, Andy Awesome finding out though. Right now he's thinking maybe I should have gone for the cover. Andy Wait. Awesome has him locked. Oh my god! god. And he draws him like a sack of potatoes. And the Baltimore bad boy continues on his roll. And Matt Barnett, unfortunately for him, seems to be headed down the path of self-destruction this morning. A great effort by the kid, but a losing one. I tell you, Matt Barnett gave it all his all when you consider everything that he has been through this morning. For the past 16 years, Mark Hunt has helped hundreds of people who were injured in a car wreck. Mark Hunt and Associates help people put their lives back together after a car wreck. We get cars repaired, medical bills and lost wages paid, and get you the compensation deserved. Call Mark Hunt and Associates. We have the experience to help you when you can't help yourself. Mark Hunt and Associates, 304-344-1800 or on the web at www.markahunt.com. 
Kramer Security and Investigations, an industry leader, is currently hiring for the position of security officer throughout Southern West Virginia. At Kramer, quality begins and ends with our security officers. We are proud to offer a variety of shifts, competitive wages, professional training, and a great opportunity. For information, please call 304-256-0300. That's 256-0300 or apply in person at our Market Street, Beckley or Walker Street, Princeton locations. Kramer Security and Investigations, securing your future today. An equal opportunity employer. The fastest sale on wheels is back at Lewis Nissan in Beckley. Rapid price markdowns over 200 vehicles. New 2011 Nissan Frontier King Cab. Rapid price markdown to only 22,900. New 2010 Nissan Altima 2.5 sedans. Rapid price markdown to only 15,995. Plus 0% APR on new Nissans. Rapid price markdowns are back only at Lewis Nissan in Beckley. Call 1-800-TO-BECKLEY or online at lewisnissan.com. This is Commissioner Larry Light. If you'd like to see the great TV stars of NWA Mountain State Wrestling come to your town, give us a call at area code 304-673-2054 or check us out on the web at mountainstatewrestling.com. Ricky Shane, today you'll be wrestling Carl in the very dangerous, famous ladder match. Now I know from experience you can handle it, but come on now, you know the matches get very dangerous. Carl. I didn't just suggest this match because this is something I want to do. This is something I'm good at. I've had two of them here in Mountain State Wrestling. The first time, I was almost dynamically victorious. The second time, I took the NWA Mountain State Heavyweight Champion to his limit and I took his title. Ricky Shane climbed the top and took the heavyweight strap from the maestro himself. So who are you, Carl, to think you're going to climb in the ring with me and pin me or climb to the top of a ladder? Not happening. Because at the end of the night, my hand will be raised. You can guarantee it. Today is the big day where Carl will be having a ladder match. Hold on, Jock. You got that wrong. It's not just Carl anymore. It's the voice of the truth. Get out of here. Anyway, tonight, I've got a ladder match for Freaky Shane. Well, here's the deal. Ricky Shane, you think you got me back into a corner by putting your match of choice up here? The ladder match? You've got me back into a corner. Yeah, you probably do have me back up in the corner. But let me tell you this, Ricky Shane. An animal is at its most dangerous when it's backed into a corner. <laughs> That's true for lions, tigers, and even a jackal like myself. But remember this, Ricky Shane. I'm smarter than you, and I've got a backup plan. <laughs> and here we are, waiting the arrival of the Psycho Superman. <laughs> My boy, Carl. And there is a man who is definitely willing to do what it takes to get things done. A guy who's helped open my mind to the facts around me I've been unfortunately ignoring for so long. That guys like him, Andy Awesome, are the new trend of outlaws in our business. Understandable. Yeah, no, wait a minute. That's where I got a picture of Nook, okay? 
It's written by a doctor. How valid could a piece of no. How are you doing, Mr. Carl? Ricky, it is valid. It's, it's valid. Absolutely valid. Sometimes good things happen for good people. Bad things happen to guys like Ricky Shane. and just legitimately beating away on Carl. Well, I tell you what, he, he has every right to attack Carl. I, and I tell you what, in all the excitement, I don't even know what the stipulation for this match is. Every right? Are you kidding me? He attacked before there was a ring bell. How dirty and underhanded can you get, Ricky Shane? Mr. Old School? I don't know. I didn't realize old school, man, I don't have to pay attention to the rule book when I don't want to. No, the attack was pretty dynamite, I would say so, don't you think? I would say it was legitimately dynamite. There you go. Carl claiming that they need to slow down this match. Carl and Ricky Shane, collar and elbow tie-up. Ricky Shane forcing the psycho Superman into the ropes. I believe he just raked the eyes of Carl. Grabbing him by the hair in the back of the trunks. Throws him over the top rope. Carl hangs on for Dylan Life. And that's legal because apparently Ricky Shane has claimed a no disqualification match to take place. Evidently, this is a build the rules as you go kind of match. Oh, look at the great move by Ricky Shane. Ricky Shane, the underhanded son of a gun that he is. Not letting up on Carl for even a moment. Takes that kendo stick. Doesn't even inform the guy what the match is going to be with any prompt time frame. And just welling away. Oh, Ricky Shane came here thinking he was going to have a ladder match. And Ricky had to change the. But you see Carl once again turning things around. He's not going to let Ricky Shane's mind games of saying, we're going to have a ladder match, wait, it's going to be an ODQ match. He's not letting that get to him. He's not going to respond to these dishonest ploys of Ricky Shane, not giving him any notice on what kind of match they're going to have. He goes right after him. He regains the advantage. And he's showing the fans that no matter how much they want it, no matter how much the Little Muppets cheer, he's going to take Ricky apart. Oh, Ricky Shane, he's going to go out and like, have some fun in the audience. And you see the crowd scattering away, and with good reason. Carl just sent him into the row of chairs from the front row to the back row, and carnage unfolding like never before here in Hillbilly Heaven, Hinton, West Virginia. I tell you, that looked like it was back on Interstate 64. And Carl back in control now after tossing Ricky Shane to half a dozen chairs. We may not have rung the bell, but Ricky Shane just heard it. And Carl just following after him. Ricky, oh. though, turning things around, choking Carl with a t-shirt. Well, I tell you, you got to love a good no disqualification match, especially when both men put their heart and soul into this. And Ricky Shane trying to separate the shoulder of his once good friend, the psycho Superman Carl. And I tell you, Steve, do not forget about the stipulation. The winner of this match chooses the stipulation for the next match. And if Ricky Shane... Good God, Ricky Shane just about decapitated Carl with that Yakuza kick. He just drove his head between both parts of that steel chair. And any other man right now might want to give things up, but Carl likes pain. A little sound problem by our staff over there. As Ricky Shane tosses him back into the ring. And Ricky showing no mercy. Ricky going right after him, throwing chair after chair after chair into that ring. Carl has one of them. Ricky might want to hurry the hell up if he doesn't want to get caught by one. 
Oh, right on the ground of that Ricky Shane goes down. Thank God. Come on, Carl, take him apart, buddy. Going for the cover. One, two, thank you, go. No, 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 no. Come on, no. That one was all but over. That was a slow count. And you see Carl hammering away as the fans count one, two, three, four, twenty-five. The fans of this arena showing their love and appreciation for Carl. Good job, buddy. Oh, wait a minute. What's he doing? He's setting Ricky Shane up now. He's preparing Ricky Shane for the end. Gives him a little scratch on the head. How you doing, buddy? Runs in. And Carl might not be the maestro, but he just taught Ricky Shane to sing soprano. Oh, I tell you what, steal a phrase from our ring announcer. That doesn't tickle. That certainly does not. Cover. And Ricky Shane grabs the ropes. What the hell does it matter? It's no DQ. That shouldn't break anything up. Well, referee. Good God. That might have just knocked Carl out. It would have knocked a normal man out, but Carl, his head, I've always said it's been so thick, and thank God it is, he is still in this one. And wait a minute, it looks like Ricky Shane. Ricky Shane setting him up here. Oh yeah, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, baby. And, whoa. Whoa. That one may have hurt a little. Oh. That doesn't tickle in stereo. We need a doctor out here. Doctor, not the we need an ice pack. Someone called the police. I believe Carl's future children have just been assaulted. Oh. Yeah. Referee called for Ricky Shane to open up that hand. Ricky Shane stacking the chair. Come on, Carl. Yeah. Oh, Ricky Shane measures him. Nice sliding drop kick. The chair just hitting right off the top of Carl's head. And it's like I said earlier, that would be it for a normal man. But how many times have we talked about those famous headbutts? That thick skull. It's unnaturally thick, and it's keeping him in this well past the point where a normal man would have either been knocked out or thought enough about quitting to have quit this match and saved their own life. But Carl doesn't care about his own safety. No, Hell, he not. likes the pain. I tell you, Ricky Shane going that high red district that he has known well for. And Shane just missed big time! Carl had the strength and the wisdom to move out of the way of that. And this is the opening he's been waiting for during this contest. I tell you, I think that could have ruptured one of Ricky Shane's abdominal muscles the way he came down. Could have broken a rib, could have done a lot of things. Not, not one damn one of them is a good thing, though. Not at all. Ricky Shane and Carl. Battling to get up to their feet. Carl first man oh. side rush and leg sweep onto the chair. And Ricky Shane's back absorbed the brunt of that maneuver. And I tell you, Ricky Shane that has to be in so much pain now. I mean, the front of the ribs, the back of the ribs, they've all taken chair shots. And now, wait, what is Carl doing? Carl positioning the chair in front of Ricky Shane's face. Maybe a little bit of payback, measures him. Runs off opposite corner. Oh. One coast to the other. And what did the chair say when it met Ricky Shane's face? What's that? Good night, this one's over. Oh, and I tell you what, Steve, you may be right. Because Carl jumped Ricky Shane out in the corner with that chair. Well, this one would have been over, but Carl, he's a little bit mad right now. He's taking exception to all the underhanded tactics of Ricky Shane perpetrated against him over the last couple weeks. He wants to hurt him for a little bit longer. And you see the look on Ricky Shane's face. He isn't very happy about this. Carl's measuring him for the end right now. And Ricky Shane turns around. Good night, buddy. Ricky Shane totally dazed. Let's cover one, two. No, no, no. How in the hell did he kick out of that one? Ricky Shane has great fortitude as somebody who has been a triple crown champion here in Mountain State Wrestling, TV champion, heavyweight champion, tag team champion. He has the fortitude to not be put down that easily. He is giving it all out there because he knows that if he loses this match, Carl picks the stipulation for the next one. Yeah, but he'd live to fight another day as it is. Carl's going to take his life to not to this morning. Well, I tell you what, Ricky Shane could have a great swing of momentum if he was victorious because he would be two in that best of five series. And Ricky plants him right there, takes the seal chair, drags Carl's prone body over to it, places it on top of the abdomen. Grabs another chair, places it on top of Carl. 
Climbs the top. Middle rope. High rep district again. All, All the way up nothing. from the heavens. Big elbow drop. He might have broken his own arm. He might have knocked Carl's teeth out. Went down to the last minute. Both of these men need to do something. Once again, mortal man would have been done by Carl. He was the first one back up to his feet. Wrap the chain around the fist. About to knock Tricky out. Oh, straight jacket. That's going to be it. Count of one, two. Thank you, God. Good job, buddy. Good job. Carl, I wonder if he's going to take this opportunity to announce his stipulation for the next match right now. I really want to think what is in that methodical head. Well, why don't you? And Carl telling Ricky. You want to know what match will happen next? Yes. Yes. You're going to have to win. <laughs> Carl telling everyone here, he doesn't have to work on your terms. The ball's in my court right now, and my court is as mad and as crazy as it gets, and we play by our own rules. And Ricky Shane right now, wishing maybe he played a different set of rules, as this no disqualification situation did not work out well for him. How you doing, everybody? I'm Jacques Bollier, here with Jonathan Stiles. I am the outlaw rock star, Stephen Hensley. Lane fast, call it high speed. I've been working hard, yeah. I've been working nightly. If you think you'll win, ha, not fucking likely. I be taking shots, yeah, cold blooded, icy. Watching numbers grow is what I call sightseeing. In the front row, run it up when they hype me. The following grows, they know how to ignite me. Call me CEO, I've been running shit right, see. And I ain't playing games, I create my own lane, making pleasure out of pain, uh. Turning losses into gains, I'm the boss, I'm making change, I've been rocking this exchange, uh Popping off and risking things, gonna make a fucking name, I just wanna be famous The Urban Death Squad It doesn't matter what your names are either Everybody talks about how bad they are We can't even say it on this YouTube right here But we've lived it You listen and you listen well The last team had a little accident in the parking lot after the show NWA, you've been So take all the money you got, put it together, come out and say it's because you don't want to miss it. The NWA, Mountain State, Mountain State Wrestling. That's Sundays, 11 a.m. on Fox. In high definition. Hi. West Virginia, I'm Jacques Moliere, and with me is one half of Cruise Control. I don't need you. Saturday, March the 12th, Hinton, West Virginia. Cruise Control comes back to Hinton. We're going to take those titles from the Bunkhouse Boys because 2011 is the year of Cruise Control. We have a show coming to a local area. Why don't you tell everybody about it? March 19th, Mullins, West Virginia, be there. I know the Bunkhouse Boys will be, and that means I will be too. Coming for you, boys. Mr. The Bandit, former television champion, all time one half of the greatest outlaw tag team champions of all time, the Bunkhouse Boys. But he's got a hell of a task out in front of him this morning. It's going to be one half of Cruise Control, Sean Cruz. 
Yeah. I got to tell you, Steve, you got to be between a rock and a hard place on who to root for in this match. Well, Jonathan Styles, I'm going to do what I always do. I'm going to call this impartially right down the middle. You That's the kind of journalist I am. That's the kind of announcer I am. I have integrity. Do you know there's a special place reserved for you next to the devil for telling lies like that? So it's a spot for influential men. I can live with that. Oh. Oh. You know, Jacques Moliere once told me I was the greatest mind in the mountain state. And he would know he's the man's man. And you see there the homicidal son I never had, Mr. Sean Cruz making his way out with his brother, Robbie Cruz, for this exciting high-profile singles contest this morning. And you can see Cruz Control definitely eyeing those NWA Mountain State Wrestling Tag Team titles. The man that tells him he better watch himself this morning, it's going to be Sean Cruz. It's going to be the bandit. It's NWA Mount State Wrestling. And it ain't going to be pretty. All right, let's go. Chuck. That is a fantastic shirt. Do you know what it says right here? It says ring the bell to raise some bleep. To raise some hell. It doesn't say that. There's a little bleep. Jonathan, maybe when you're 15 years old, you'll be able to say the words that adults like I say. I can say those words now, but I like my job. We'll find you a program, buddy. Oh. And I tell you what, fans, if you're as a, a big a fan of the Bunkhouse Boys as Stephen Hensley is, the I know you Boys, are. The Bunkhouse Boys have t-shirts for sale now at the live events of the same one that you've seen the bandit wear this morning. And we got a shoving match starting things off. And we see the fist start of flying quickly in this one. Two outlaws meet. They ain't going to waste time with the rule book. They're going to go right to the outlaws playbook. They're going to get an advantage by any means necessary. And this is going to be a contest for fans to watch. You're going to see two guys who aren't going to make any bones about it. They're out there to win by any means necessary. They're not scared to break the rules. They're not scared to bend them. They'll do what it takes. And that's going to provide some high octane fuel for a hell of a fire going on in the middle of that ring tonight. And I tell you, the fans are cheering Sean Cruz as he jabs and toys with the big man that known is the bandit. Bandit and Sean circling each other. Lo locking up fingers here. Sean Cruz going straight to an arm bar. And for those of you who are not familiar with the history of Mountain State Wrestling, Bandit did have a successful singles career as the television champion when his partner Big Willie Blackheart was out with an injury for a while. So for those of you who underestimated the Bandit this morning, do not do so. The Bandit going right to work on the arm of Sean Cruz. Hammering her away with those vicious elbows. Repeatedly, Sean Cruz goes to the ropes, forces the break. Bandit making full use of that five count, going all the way to four and three quarters, though, before relinquishing the hold, doing as much damage as possible. Um, I tell you, Cruz, I mean, it's not funny. I think some people in here were finding hilarious at the beating that Cruz is taking right now. This isn't a beating. This is an opening of a contest, Jay Styles. Yeah, the Bandit in control for the moment, or at least a moment ago. But you see right now, Sean Cruz has already broken up that momentum. And he didn't even have to use a hold. He just took his time, he slowed it down. Now he has an opportunity, and he's going to do everything he can to make the most of it. And Sean Cruz. Back to the tie up now. I kind of like the moniker that the audience has given him for the fact of Crybaby Cruz. <coughs> I believe that it suits him well. The only place Sean Cruz has been crying lately is all the way to the bank. He's a number one contender for an NWA Mountain State Wrestling Championship with his brother Robbie. 
The is, NWA Mount State Wrestling Tag Titles, the most important titles next to the world titles in our business. That's nothing to cry about. He's nothing but smiles. And you see, Sean, and I told you a moment ago this is what he was doing. He slowed things down and then he picked his opening. And now he's going right to work on the leg of the bandit. Well, Sean Cruz known to dismantle our park. That's dismantling the double team efforts of cruise control continue to dismantle the leg of the bandit. Well, it pains me to see that happen to the bandit. Lord knows I love him, but I don't disagree with the tactic. You got to take apart your opponent by any means necessary. They've got a big match coming up to Sean and Robbie against the Bunkhouse Boys for those tag belts. And they should do everything they can right now to soften the bandit up going into that one. The bandit knows they were going to do that. He didn't run away from it, though, because he's a man. Two count only as Sean Cruz continues to wreck the leg. And now pound away on it from our disadvantage point. This is a great strategy for Sean, too. The bandit, he's got a lot of size on his frame. He's definitely the heavier oh, of the two men. Package, this could be it. Sorry to cut you off like that, Steve. It's all right, but you see right there, the bandit, his legs already absorbed too much punishment. Hard to hold on to that small package there when he hooked the leg. Made it much easier for Sean Cruz to kick out of it. And like I was saying, the bandit has a very large frame. And a large frame with a will that's busted, that's a lot of weight to support. And every time he stands, it's going to be torture for him. I wasn't even thinking about that, but it's an excellent point, Steve. I was, that you need, was taking away the wheels of the bandit, so it give him less of a chance to use his upper body strength to his advantage. Absolutely. Oh, but the man is saying that he's not going to submit. And I'll tell you what, fans, if you think this main event is something, you need to check out the main event next week. You Hold see him. the right, look right there. Look right there, he's turning it over. Oh, yes, he does, and he reverses on. That's what I'm talking about. There's a whole lot of fight in that man. There ain't a whole lot of quit in him. Not for nothing, not for no one. And once again, Bandit making full use of that five count to his advantage. I'll tell you what, Bandit. Uh, it looks like what you were predicting, Steve, has come true. And now it's the hobble along. And Sean Cruz going right back to work on dissecting that leg of the bandit. The bandit, I know he doesn't like this, but he's a very intelligent wrestler. He's a wrestler's wrestler. I know he appreciates the tactic that Sean's using. He's going to remember everything that's happening right now when it comes to that NWA Mount State Wrestling Tag Team Championship. And yeah, things might look down for him right now. Don't count the bandit out. He's been in this business a long time, and he can pull a victory out of nowhere. Wow, the bandit trying to fight back, slapping away at the midsection of Sean Cruz, and unsuccessful, unfortunately. You see Sean going right back to work on those legs of the bandit. Oh, great European uppercut by Sean Cruz. I gotta give credit where credit is due. That's a West Virginian uppercut, thank you. Well, how is that different than a European uppercut? Performed by a man from West Virginia, therefore making it infinitely better than Europe. Virginia. He's competing in West Virginia. I've taken him under my wing. We're boys. Uh, well, anything to retort me, isn't it, Steve? Anything to retort me. Pretty good at it. See Sean Cruz measuring the band about out of nowhere like a stick. Bunkhouse slam, hook swag, but Robbie in there. Robbie not letting the pinfall take place. They've done all the damage they can this morning. They're not going to suffer a pinfall loss going in that tag team match. You see the bandit reversing it. Catches Robbie. Takes him up. Slams him square center in the ring. The sun coming in so quick, cutting off that momentum. Grabbing a steel chair in tow and the bandit retreating to the outside. And what a situation, Jay Styles. John and Robbie Cruz doing everything they can to make a stick at this point. The Bandit, too smart and too quick though to fall prey to these tactics for long. Bells to the outside, he'll live to fight another day. But that NWA Mount St. Wrestling Tag Team Championship match coming in the future will be a match to keep your eyes on. Oh, a lot of bad blood.
Investigation, securing your future today. An equal opportunity employer. The fastest sale on wheels is back at Lewis Automotive in Backley. Rapid price markdowns on every vehicle. Cars, trucks, vans, SUVs, all makes, all models are marked down. Some as much as 50% off original MSRP. Choose from our easy financing options and we'll get you in the vehicle you want at a price you can afford. Plus, we'll buy your vehicle whether you buy from us or not. Rapid price markdowns are back only at Lewis Nissan in Beckley. Call 1-800-TO-BECKLEY or online at lewisautomotive.com. For the past 16 years, Mark Hunt has helped hundreds of people who were injured in a car wreck. Mark Hunt and Associates help people put their lives back together after a car wreck. We get cars repaired, medical bills and lost wages paid, and get you the compensation deserved. Call Mark Hunt and Associates. We have the experience to help you when you can't help yourself. Mark Hunt and Associates, 304-344-1800 or on the web at www.markahunt.com. Stephen Hensley, I was disgusted by the way Bulldozer attempted to use Matt Barnett as a human chair this morning. I don't know why that would disgust you. He earned his coronation. It should go however the hell he wants. And how about the disrespect shown by Stro the Maestro of Wrestling when he came out there, ruined a perfectly good time. What? I was having a good time. The Bulldozer was having a good time. The American original, Baltimore bad boy Andy Austin, he was having a good time too. I wasn't having a good time though. Chuck, you were having a good time, weren't you? You know, I seen what happened. I wasn't really thinking about it. You know, I was trying to look the other way. But yeah, I always have a good time here. Yes, yes, I do. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. It's almost a very neutral answer, but I can tell you right now, my boy Jacques Moliere, he's part of the Outlaw Nation, and he knows the truth when he hears it. Now, Matt Barnett did try and come up victorious in this match. He got that TV title shot against Andy Awesome. And I tell you, he put forth the best effort I've ever seen in a TV title match. Yeah, and it was still losing effort because that's what Matt Barnett is. That did, did come, come up a little bit. But, speaking of big matches, though, what about Carl becoming victorious over Ricky Shea and now gets to set the stipulation in the next match? And how about the fact he isn't telling you? But not even what? you? No, not even me. Trust me, I don't want to know. I like surprises, especially Carl's. Because they involve hurting Ricky Shane. Uh, speaking of hurts, I gotta tell you, the bandit has to be hurting this morning after that attack by Robbie Cruz as he was wrestling Sean Cruz, which allowed Bandit to garner another victory. You know, a lot of mixed feelings about that, but I gotta say, cruise control, they aren't aiming to drop the ball. They're going to make the most of, out of this situation. They plan on bringing home the tag belts. The way they're looking out there every week, yeah, maybe they aren't picking up the victories, but they are finding their openings, and they may walk out of that thing with the NWA, Mountain State Wrestling, Tag Team Championship. For the Outlaw Rockstar, Sweet Stephen Hensley, the man's man, Jock Moliere, this is the voice of tradition, Jonathan Stiles saying, we'll see you next week. Cameraman, get a good shot of it. Ten pounds of leather and gold, synonymous with greatness. This is NWA Mountain State Wrestling on Fox 59.